there are no diseases, no sicknesses, no viruses, no, no, no immune system that you need to strengthen in order to protect yourself against outside enemies. All those things don't exist. Wasted, 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 wasted. The past days were super intense. And no, I'm not sick. When people say to me, Robert, I hope everything will be okay soon. May your body heal. Like I always say, no, I'm not sick. My body doesn't need to heal. Nothing is wrong. Everything is in perfect order. I don't have any disease. I don't have any sickness. Everything is perfect as it is. It's just my body adapting in minor ways in order to aid my thriving and my surviving. And this perspective that the five biological laws are taking, that there are no diseases, no sicknesses, no viruses, no, no, no immune system that you need to strengthen in order to protect yourself against outside enemies. Oh wow, the jungle is on fire. All those things don't exist. What is going on right now with my nose running and my throat hurting and my voice not being fully present and probably my my head hurting a little bit and all these things is a sensible biological special program that is designed to as I said aid my thriving and my surviving and there is nothing wrong <laughs> this perspective it's so liberating. Oh, okay. Oh no! Oh no. Resolve the conflict. And for the past three weeks, I've had, you know, maybe like 5%, some occasionally of the tightness that was there, but it's pretty much completely gone away. You know, doing every alternative health thing, learning about all this stuff, and just like increasingly feeling like. That's so crazy. What it does to your life if you, if you sense, if you think about disease as something coming like all of out of a sudden, compared to really understanding what's going on, and then like, okay, oh, this is bad. Okay, I know where it's coming from. All right, friends. I'm in the car, back on the way to. Uh, to Urubato after spending a day in Ubud celebrating Joey's birthday um, <coughs> which was very nice yesterday <coughs> but now back to Leo back to my son um, we dove a lot into the five biological laws today again and I want to share with you one example that for me was very um, very eye-opening let's assume there is a mouse in somewhere wilderness there's a mouse and this mouse realizes oh shit <coughs> there's a cat behind me so this mouse will pretty likely suffer from a death fright conflict as it's called in the terms of the five biological laws a death fright conflict is there to enable you to run faster <laughs> for the mouse it makes a lot of sense to be able to unleash her full capacity for running as fast as possible so that the chances of escaping from the cat are as high as possible so when this death right conflict occurs of being like oh shit like my life is on the line then the lungs or especially the lung alveoli proliferate so they increase 
the lung capacity gets bigger so that we are able to run faster and longer which makes sense because like everything in our, in our life will be pretty pointless if we don't escape from the cat our life will be over so all the maximum capacity of the lungs are being used and then when the mouse escaped from the cat <coughs> all this built up tissue needs to be needs to be um, uh, discarded because you cannot live like <laughs> your whole life with this build up lung capacity it's only for emergency only if you suffer this lung uh, this um, only if you suffer this death threat conflict this is the special biological program and then the tissue gets um, gets discarded again and probably um, removed um, out of our throat with some mucus or maybe even blood and then after a while it's back to normal and since we as human beings still possess our primal biology but very rarely do we <laughs> suffer from a typical death fright conflict meaning we are out there in the wilderness and then a lion approaches us and we need to run as fast as possible but in our civilized lives we created many circumstances where we suffer those death threat conflicts too for example if we go to a doctor and the doctor says you have <coughs> late stage cancer you only have six months to live our body pretty likely interprets this as the same death threat conflict as the mouse when it gets chased by the cat. The thing is just, from this diagnosis of the doctor, we cannot escape. There's no running away from this diagnosis. And that's what creates all those like chronic diseases that we know nowadays, because we cannot solve this. We cannot, like, we are always on emergency mode for like days and weeks and months. And this gets pretty um, dangerous. And the same dynamic was at play in 2020 um, during the worldwide coronavirus epidemic, which is not a thing, <laughs> which is just the widespread suffering of like millions of people from this death threat conflict. Because everybody knows, oh my God, there's this dangerous virus out there. And when I'm in contact with other people, then I will probably get contaminated and then I will probably die because it's so dangerous. This is the same as getting a cancer diagnosis from a doctor or being chased by a cat. So there is like nothing going on, the whole world is normal, but through me believing, oh my God, when I'm with other people, I will probably uh, evokes this death right conflict in me. And as a result, I get built up tissue in the lungs and then later on it gets discarded and it's probably bloody and so on. And yeah. I create some respiratory issues just out of thin air without any like infection or, or virus or whatever just because I believe that there is a very dangerous enemy chasing me so these examples nicely show that the enemy isn't out there it's just our interpretation. It's just our primal biological bio, biology that gets put into the modern lives we are living in, where we don't chase from cats or lions or whatever, where we have all this like complex civilizational technological stuff around us and our biology trying to cope with that, trying to run a system that in the wilderness would be pretty amazing, but right now, in the lives we are living in is sometimes not perfectly fit because our biology the biology didn't adapt to our lifestyles that we inhabit nowadays so it's always the invitation to understand what are the different parts of our of our body really here for 
and what is their function and what is the special biological program running right now because we suffered some sort of conflict can be a death threat conflict can be any other can be a territorial conflict um, can be like there are many different conflicts and many different spe uh, special biological programs but they all serve one function to support our thriving and our surviving <sighs> so whenever we are suffering from any sorts of symptom be it um, coughing up bloody bloody lung cells or um, a running nose or a back pain or whatever it is this is not against us this is for us and it's our Sherlock Holmes task to uncover what is really going on there. So all my German speaking friends, here's a very, very, very good documentary, four hours exploring the intricacies of the five biological laws if that's something that's of interest to you dive into this one i will link it to you and here's a recommendation for all non-german speaking friends dr melissa sells youtube channel there are many great resources on it to explore this topic further and i'm not a medical professional i didn't study this stuff for like decades i'm just somebody who asks critical questions and a lot of things that the traditional <laughs> medical apparatus tells me is uh, is not adding up for me and doesn't resonate that there is some kind of bad enemy out there for me it makes sense that our bodies are the this infinitely um, infinitely wise and intelligent organism that are always optimizing for our own thriving. This just resonates with me. Um, I don't want to convince you of anything. I just want to share my experiences and I'm currently exploring what is behind my running nose. I know that the running nose is the conflict, conflict resolution phase of either a stink conflict or a scent conflict. The stink conflict is when we smell something disgusting and the scent conflict is when we, when we uh, try to uh, when we try to smell something that's potentially dangerous like an enemy <laughs> because that's just it, it, it just like with when you just look at it like it just makes sense that the nose is either here to protect us from potential enemies because we can smell them or the nose is here for oh that's disgusting oh don't go there don't eat that because this food is rotten and these are the two two use cases we use the nose for so it just makes sense that when something is going on in the nose it's related to one of those cases and yeah i'm just starting to explore it but i'd like to share my journey with you it's usually fascinating and liberating because there's nothing wrong yeah i have a running nose right now and there's something going on within my throat i don't know exactly what's going on and what's it related to and like what kind of conflict I suffered in which situation all this feels to me a still a little bit like uh, vague and but I'm learning and I'm exploring and with every step without every puzzle piece it gets clearer and clearer bye bye like I see bye bye almost two and a half years Leo have has never seen a doctor <laughs> never seen a hospital and for sure he was never vaccinated something that if we dive into the f five biological laws loses its, its <laughs> reason for being why like if there are no contagious diseases if everything is a sensible biological program designed f from our body to support our thriving and our surviving then like injecting some s substance into our bodies to prevent something that isn't even real 
doesn't make any sense. So, Leo has been perfectly healthy, beautifully. Of course, he has his share, share of conflicts too. The occasional running nose, the occasional like pimples and like stuff. And exploring the five biological laws, like one of the main drivers for that is to understand what is going on inside this little body because you cannot tell with words what exactly is going on when like I can understand oh yesterday he was crying because his grandma left to Bali that's why the following reaction took place in his body and this manifested through whatever kind of symptom ah that makes sense it was not because he went to the kindergarten and another child had a disease and like that was contagious no was because of grandma yeah so yeah hugely fascinating topic i will explore more in the future but for now i will go to bed two nights here in ulu and then back home finally after a long week of travel wow i'm tired i'm tired have a good night see you tomorrow